Hello. I have Retro Kid or Retro Kid Reviews. And yeah, this is the closest I'm ever going to be to look like Schwarzenegger with Nerf Armor. And uh, this is a very long, overly broken uh, Street Fair gun. Anyway, um, yeah, this is not the uh, Black Widow review you guys were probably expecting. Um, also, I'm taking the jacket off because it is hot in this uh, semi air conditioned uh, July uh, summer. So, that being said, uh, this is a long overdue review for both myself and mainly my childhood of uh, Terminator 2 Judgment Day. And, um,. If the IMDb down below is uh, misspelling the uh, title for some stupid reason, uh, no, that's how it was actually spelled back in 91. And uh, let's just get this out of the way. This is a now 30-year-old movie, and I'm about to be that same age in about, I don't know, three months? <laughs> uh, I guess if you want to do pre-happy 30th uh, uh, birthday uh, comments down below, uh, that would be great. Also, like this video because I really am wishing I could have an editing software, so finally copy and paste a lot of footage so uh for this vlog uh review it's basically going to be my thoughts overall for the series and overall for the two best movies of the franchise i've had a history with uh talking about terminator movies since uh, genesis so cards of that and uh, my dark fate reviews so uh without a lot of the way what's there to say about t2 that hasn't really already been said i know i've said that a lot in my channel but this bears repeating more so than ever this is the sequel. This is the sequel that every Terminator movie has been trying to measure up for decades now. For basically, like I said, three decades since, they've been trying to measure up. Um, I might do a retro review someday with uh, Salvation and um, Rise of the Machines as a double review. And I know for a fact both those movies can't measure up. Uh, in Salvation's case, it was trying to be a hard reboot, which even they couldn't do. Uh, three actually tried to measure up, try to be the sequel to the greatest sequel of the Terminator franchise, and it kind of works on the stunts angle, not so much everything else. That being said, uh, starting off at the top, you get Schwarzenegger and Robert Patrick as, uh, in Schwarzenegger's case, the classic at the time, uh, T1, T101, uh, Terminator series, and for Robert Patrick, it was the one, the only, the T-1000. Now, fun fact for that uh, version, of, um, in Robert's case, that was actually supposed to come out, if you could believe it or not, this is 30-year-old rumors at this point, um, supposed to be in the first Terminator, I guess during, like, the future flashback when Kyle was going on and on about how these models are all different and stuff. Uh, Joel Morton, uh, for Miles Bennett Dyson, yes, this is one of those movies I know the cast to heart. I don't need the IMDb down below. If you do, uh, wiki like what do you want me to say um he's basically the guy that kicks off uh, mostly the 1997 timeline version of uh, the skynet war um dr silverman uh for those who don't know was the uh i guess running gag therapist till i want to say t3 and he had a lot more screen time than he did uh for the back half of the first movie and it shows uh it's supposed to be like a flash forward to where uh, sarah's been over the years uh once once again played by uh, uh lindell hamilton and her sister, uh, yeah, I think I mentioned this briefly in my Dark Fate review, but I found out years ago, uh, that, yeah, her and her twin sister helped out on doing stunts, more in particular the third act of the movie, we'll get to that when we get to that. And, um, a certain flashback sequence, or I guess dream sequence. Um, I'm mostly gonna cover, uh, what was on Netflix, which was the theatrical cut, not the director's cut. The only differences you can, um, figure out about the director's cut, uh, is that, uh, Linda had, I mean, sorry, Sarah had more, uh, extended dream sequences of, like, uh, like, early on when she was still in, uh, Pescatero, uh, Mental Institute. Um, she was talking to Kyle, uh, like a ghost version of Kyle, played once again by Michael Bean. Uh, just warning her that Terminators are coming back again, and it was, like, self-deluding herself into believing that this is actually happening instead of having a weird feeling, like, you would in that kind of writing back in the day. Um, I haven't really mentioned John because Edward Furlong has had a very long, weird 30 years, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, he was one of those child actors that basically became the stereotype of, oh, you're going to crash in like a couple years. And he kind of did. Um, the only two movies I've seen him in post-T2 was, I think, a Kiss movie, uh, I think Detroit Rock City, again, if I got the name right, a uh, classic trailer above. And a Crow sequel. Not just any Crow sequel, the director video kind of Crow sequels. Yeah, it was like that for him for a hot minute. 
Again, I could be wrong on that also. Um, but yeah, uh, this was his first time uh, acting in general, not just being John. Um, he did the best of what he could. Um, I think there was also uh, IMDb or a uh, uh, old movie uh, fact that uh, he uh, was going through puberty uh, during a certain act of the movie. I think um, I'm going to take a while, guess, when he was trying to emphasize that uh, Sarah was getting ready to kill Dyson. I think that's when his voice started to crack and when puberty kicked in. Um, your miles may vary which scene it is. Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, as for, uh, the rest of the movie, um, non-spoilers from here on out. Um, again, the only major differences in the director's cut, like I said, was, in, uh, T-1000's case, is that by the time you get to the third act, he, you know, like, starts breaking down and stuff, and it's supposed to emphasize more of, like, the CG they were trying to make at the time. The reason why, uh, the t 1000 CG is timeless, weird as it sounds, even three decades on, is because, uh, Cameron tried this out during the Abyss, so classic trailer there. Um, you could tell even in the Abyss it was a little rough and stuff, but it was a story of its own making, and he did the best of what he could. And it also explains his deep sea, uh, underwater dives for the next three decades to come, aside from, uh, Titanic later on. Um, so yeah, what's there to say about Schwarzenegger's version of the character this time around? Um, it's a non-lethal version. I know it looks like he has nearly killed a lot of humans, but trust me when I say... This is the R-rated equivalent of trying to go PG-13. And goddamn it does it still show to this day. Uh, some things I can't mention because, again, I won't have time and this is my phone of all things. Um, I know uh, for Breaking Bad fans, if you're if, you, if you're a really eagle-eyed viewer, uh, you can uh, blink if you miss it on some of the best scene. Um, on Miles' case, the... <laughs> yeah, the self-destruct third act. Um, yeah, uh, that was Dean Norris. Uh, yeah, Hank from Breaking Bad was a, a long-time, uh, stunt character actor and now a decent character actor nowadays. Um, so yeah, overall with the story, it's great. Uh, stunt-wise, let's get into it. Uh, the first opening act with, uh, the truck chase scene is amazing. Um, you can barely tell, like, some, like, blue screen splicing that they probably did, uh, for certain angles and stuff. Because, again, they have to use stunt guys back in the day. Same thing, too, when, uh, during the Escape of the Pescadero, uh, Mental too, you can tell there's some, like, green screen, um, like, old, like, uh, sitcom, like, uh, truck uh, rocking effects when, uh, when the whole action scene was done. Um, practically speaking, basically, uh, it looks like the most unique real steel you're gonna get with most of the guns at the time, uh, prop-wise. And in Linda's case, you actually actually had to learn, um, I think it's Israeli-ish, uh, trailing to, um, pick locks. Uh, again, I might have mentioned in my Dark Ray Fate review, I was wondering at, at the time when I was making that review if any of that training had to be re relearned uh, for the stuff that Sarah was doing that time around for Dark Fate. I doubt immensely, but it would have been it would have been a nice little nod to like you know relearn that kind of stuff if Linda was doing that. So with that all said, uh, the CG for T one thousand, like I said, it was very unique at the time, and uh, especially by the time you kick off the third act when he was doing the helicopter stuff, you can tell um, there was some practical stuff too. Like uh, early on when he was getting shot, there was like basic tin foil designs and stuff like that. Uh, the reason why that's been more or less the thing on the practical side of things was the late Stan Winston. He was in charge for a lot of basically the entirety of VFX when it comes to the 80s and 90s. Um, I think he was in charge of mostly the Predator movies early on and obviously the Terminator movies going forward. And yeah, you could tell he blood, sweat, and teared knowing that they put a healthier budget than usual. At the time, uh, it was uh, at the, I think it was like a hundred and uh, 102 million dollar budget uh, versus what the first movie had budget wise was six million and gained 50 plus at the time in the 80s that's basically getting 100 mil now had that with the beefier budget they have in 91 and the overall box office worldwide at the time was 520.9 million dollars convert that to today's dollars that's basically getting a billion <laughs> Um, I, I don't know if I have time to mention any of the cards, but, um, there was a huge video, uh, VHS campaign I found of, like, Robert Patrick just, like, talking how awesome they did, uh, during his theatrical run, and if I could get the time, please check that out. It's weird and very synergistic, uh, even for the 90s, I'm gonna give you that, um, but if you were, like, a Blockbuster employee back then, let me know in the comments if you actually had to sit through videos like that. That must have been really freaking weird, I'm gonna be honest. Um... Yeah, if I'm, like, really, like, ear-to-ear, -ear, uh, smiling more than usual, it's because this was my movie. This was my movie from my childhood. This is one of my favorite movies of all time. And I, 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 un I unironically love this for all of its flaws and stuff. Um, like I said, with the, the helicopter chase, you could tell, like, they had to do a practical, like, third arm for him to, like, steady the thing. 
Um, bunch of, like, factoids of, like, how Robert was portraying the role. Um, my favorite one is basically he had to, like, hold his breath doing the, the first chasing of the Pescadero. Mainly because the T-1000 would do that. He would shut off his air just to run faster. And that's a weird thing, but yet, technically, that would make sense for a Terminator of that design. So, yeah, uh, the third act, the ending. Um, it was emotional, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, just seeing him slowly go down with a thumbs up and all, and, um... Yeah, it still hits me. It, I, I know I'm turning 30 in like a couple of days. I mean, sorry, a couple of months, sorry. What is time anymore after COVID? <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it still hits me. Uh, I can reinterpret it in many ways, uh, depending how I feel today. But uh, seeing this movie after my dad recently passed in January was weird. Uh, I, I don't know. I had that in my mind the whole time. Um, uh, you could tell when um, Sarah was like, like being stone cold, being trying to be like, a tactical tactician trying to like train John instead of just being a mom to John. It slowly devolves by the time like again going into the second act when she's trying to kill uh, Miles, and it, it shows she basically had a psychotic break. And it's like, the fuck am I even doing? Um. So yeah, to the entire cast, uh, thirty years on goes around saying you guys fucking crushed it. Uh, to everyone who has been in the background for years, like a certain step family that I may or may not have, I guess tricked myself or forced myself into sitting through every season of 24. Hi, George. Hi, Xavier. Yeah, uh, they had a weird but really interesting way to get killed first. And, and yeah, and in the third act, they, one of the parents does get showed up in the CG. Um, so yeah, uh, all the CG talk about T-1000s is very revolutionary, very uh, unique at the time, except for one thing. I can actually make one little criticism that uh, Nick Scorpino uh, f figured out, uh, I guess, when they were doing their end review for uh, Terminator before Dark Fate came out. Uh, again, if I had timed cards or just channel down below. Uh, you can look it up yourself. Um, when Schwarzenegger was tumble rolling, you could tell it was CG, and it's like, well, what are you going to do? And I think that was the beginning of, like, studios thinking oh we could do that and just map out stunts and not like hurt people safety wise that makes sense in the long run it doesn't really look good in the final product so basically i guess my last thoughts with the uh, with the c uh the vfx in general it's basically uh schwarzenegger versus terminator i've always contextualized this as like practical versus cg a now three decade war of studios thinking, well, CG's getting cheaper by the day, we should really do that just throughout. And then stunt guys are like, no, you still need us. It, it's basically been clashing like that for, for decades at this point. Uh, rambling a little longer than I thought I would. Um, yeah, uh, I'm smiling more than usual, like I said, and for very good reason, this is my favorite movie of all time. I will watch this till the day I die. That is the, the undeniable fact at this point. So, uh, with that all being said, if this was a actual normal review at the time, I would have given it the golden, not 10 out of 10, I would have given it 11 out of 10. It's that damn good. There's no trimmed fat. Even for the actual cut, you could still get the story, uh, very, for, uh, uh, across the board. Like, you get, you could still get a clear idea of what's going on at the time. I highly recommend the director's cut to see what they changed. Um, the only thing I will admit that is pretty weird is the Kyle dream sequence. I will admit that's kind of weird. Um, other than that, like like I said, when the Team 1000 is breaking down before the end of the third act, that's actually pretty cool. I wish they kept that in the original cut. But other than that, um, this is a flawless movie. Uh, again, like I said, two cuts aside, like you could trim the fat in either one and it'll still turn out to be a damn good movie. And that's T2, <laughs> Judgment Day. Um, also, yeah, I was about to get on about this. Uh, I am actually trying to, speak of Judgment, I'm going to try to play, um, Sega's, uh, Yakuza spinoff, Judgment. Has the same spelling as Judgment Day, in case you guys ask. Uh, no cards, because I actually am trying to do a day to play through, uh, by myself. I'll probably do a review when Lost Judgment comes out. Um, for a Yakuza, uh, stand-in, it looks pretty good. And if you're here for my non-spoilers talk for, uh, Black Widow, uh, yeah, it showed that it should have been in the same timeline right after, um, Civil War, but I'll get on to that, uh, well, later on. Uh, I'm gonna do a double review with, uh, Loki and Black Widow now with, uh, Agents of Rift, so I'll go, I'll, I'll talk to them about that later this week. So with that all being said, I can't figure out how to close this video other than there is no fate for what you make, and I don't know why that kid cries, and it's not because he was a drug runner back in the day. Yeah, that's, again, don't, if you really want to look into, like, uh, Edward Four Lawrence Pass, God be with you. That being said, end card's finally coming up to my previous review over here, uh, and my shorts playlist, uh, over here, so you see more of my shorts. Uh, I wish this was a Schwarzenegger shirt, uh, here, to sub to the channel, notification bell down below, in case, uh, somehow they do another Terminator movie after Dark Fate, uh, 
something tells me they might, they might not. Again, depending on who's giving the new studio is going to be with them after this. So, yeah, T2. This is the best movie ever, the best Terminator sequel ever, and for the last three decades, they really can't measure up now, can they? Yeah, it's like that.